Hey guys and welcome back. Here we are this morning outside of Central Station heading down to London for the Crystal Palace game. Now, instead of going home on the Sunday, we're actually going across to Southampton. I'm going to spend five days going to what is two huge away games for Newcastle. I can't stress how important these two matches are. Well, the obvious one is Southampton being a Carabao Cup semi-final game, but Palace tomorrow because of the fact that Tottenham have dropped a two-goal lead to Manchester City, if we beat Crystal Palace tomorrow night, we go eight points clear of fifth in the Premier League. That is a serious amount of points. I can't believe I'm saying that. Eight points clear, we beat Crystal Palace. What am I even saying in that Premier League team? It's mental, so it's very important tomorrow that we at least get a draw. But anyway, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you like what you're watching, make sure you get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash like button as well. Overnight stay vlog for Southampton will be on the channel as well as all the transfer news and the vlogs of the games themselves. But anyway, that's it for me. Well, further ado, let's head inside and tell you what dangerous area of South London I'm going to today. Just arrived in London now. I'm not going to lie, my train journey today was an absolute nightmare coming down now. Long story short, I'm sitting in my seat. The train, by the way, is rammed coming down. So I'm sitting in my seat. This guy comes over to me, his English isn't very good, but he believes I'm sitting in his seat, so he's trying to get me to get out of the seats, even though it quite literally is my designated seat, so I don't know if he got the wrong train or he's in the wrong carriage or what, but he wants to go in my seat. So I'm trying to explain to the guy that, listen, bud, this is my seat, like, you're not going to sit in it. So pretty much, it just got really bad, so eventually I was like, you know what, I kind of can't be arsed, so I let him sit in the seats and the rest of the train was just packed really, so I don't know if he's conned me or what, but... I pretty much had to stand the full way down for like two hours, it sucked, so yeah, it wasn't great, but ultimately uh, a life lesson for you, just don't get bullied into getting out of your seat on the train. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say, it was some experience, but I'm actually going to go across now, just across to the St. Pancras International Station to go on my second train, and I'm going to show you in just a moment why I'm staying in London today. But yeah, uh, other than that, I mean, it's quite a nice day in London, the weather's not too bad. Big heads up for Newcastle fans, by the way. Get used to this next season because once Newcastle get into European football, a lot of people will actually use this international station in London to get across to the likes of France, Netherlands, Germany, where they need to get to do. Come through here and you get past the border control. So this is a heads up. Yes, we want European football yet, yeah, but I do expect us to get there. This will be the kind of thing that fans will use next season onwards. It's taken me over four hours to get here, but I've now eventually arrived to my destination for the Crystal Palace game. So where about in South London am I staying for the Palace game? I'm staying at Croydon, so why am I staying in Croydon, you may ask. There's actually two main reasons for it, and the first one being is that it's walking distance from Southhurst Park. For me, I think after the game, it's a lot easier for me to manage my videos work and have, just have a chance to walk back to the hotel. For me, it's too much messing around where you've got to get in trains or trams and see behind this. So it's a lot easier for me just to manage my own time by walking back. And reason number two is that the hotels in Croydon is actually a lot cheaper than our areas of South London. And that gets into the negative parts now because Croydon was actually nicknamed the night crime capital of London. In 2021, Croydon had the, the highest death rate for teenagers been stabbed to death by knives it's really really bad now thankfully in 2022 they have redeemed so that would be a single teenager death at all in Croydon and night crime rate as a whole has dropped by 12% in 2022 but it's still no joke though it got to a stage where people were actually properly protesting London to get night crime to stop over here so it's still at a quite a, a serious level and so someone like me for example who's going to be out in the castle top tomorrow you know what I'm like you've seen it at the Sheffield Wednesday game for example I've had fans that are chucking tins at his fans that are coming on the camera really trying to have a go at us. And you just imagine Saturday night, 10 o'clock at night, pitch black in Croydon. It's going to be quite serious if someone spots in your castle shirt. So it's no joke. I do have to be careful. It can literally be quite dangerous. It's just a bit of common sense from me as well. I know obviously what I can what I can't do really as a Newcastle fan alone out in London. So it's well done ones where you do need to be careful. I'm going to give my honest opinion on Croydon and I'm going to head over to the hotel now and show you the area itself. But I just want to let you know some context in advance that it's going to be a very dangerous place. So, yeah, we've got to be careful. It's now time to check out the room. Now, the first thing you'll realise in the travel lodge is actually how wide the room is. It's a fair play. 
Now, as for the wardrobe, we have zero doors. I don't know why, but let's be honest, I'd rather have no doors than no wardrobe. So at least we've got the wardrobe. As for the table space over here, quite wide to be fair, quite big again. So we've been quite generous with the table here. TV's low down, but I don't use the TV to be honest. Hello there. Now, as for the chairs, how are the chairs? Unfortunately, they're plastic, they're cheap. The crap. Not to my standards at all. It's a big L for me. So these two chairs here are not for my standards. Now, as for the beds, we'll do the bed test check shortly. Now, let's have a look at my outdoor area. The view is shite, let's be fair. <laughs> I can see loads of biffa bins. There's a workplace over there. I can just see people on the computers over there. Lovely buildings there. But other than that, the view is bad. No good. Let's check out the bathroom, last but not least. Now, first off, I'll show you the shower space. So just like any travel lodge, really, not very spacious. But to be fair, the shower head doesn't look like a sex toy this time, so we've started to improve on that. Still looks like at the top, though, it's about to come off, so it doesn't look too great. It looks definitely past its prime. Now, one thing that is not good, though, is this sink. What on earth is that? That is disgusting. Is that poo? Like, how's it even that colour? What on earth has happened to my sink? Dirty, dirty, birdie. No, this is not up to my standard at all. No, 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 no. I'm not happy at that one. I don't know what has happened to the sink, but yeah. Um, I can't wait to be brushing my teeth and washing my face with that thing. What the earth is that? Yeah. That's a bit grim and disgusting, but as for the room itself... I mean, for London, it's kind of what you expect. Really, travel lodges in London are definitely worse than other places in the country, to be honest. But, I mean, at, at times, these hotels especially, I always try to have a mix, personally. I, I don't want to just go to nice hotels all the time. I just go to crap hotels all the time. I always try to have a bit of a mix to make it a bit more exciting than these vlogs. But as for my hotel here in Croydon, I mean, pretty average, to be honest. Probably the one of the lower travel lodges I've been to, which is unfortunate because the area itself around the travel lodge is quite nice. It's just, I mean, what the hell is going on in my room? A brand new feature I'm going to start including in my overnight stay vlogs is the shivered zone. So if my hotel room sucks, it goes into the hall of shame and it goes into the shivered zone, out of the way and out of my mind forever because I'm, I'm sick of these hotels letting me down. The one in Germany annoys me the most. I went out with a journey, first impression, I'm about to go into Australia to stay over one night. Bed bugs are attacking me at two in the morning, I've just came off a, a bloody flight. Oh, it's, oh, it's still irritates me. I've been, never been so let down my life in Germany, but today though in Croydon, will it join them in the shipping zone or will it survive? This bed will make or break this hotel room because it's a very average room for my standards really. So let's check it out now. Hmm. It's not the softest bed I've ever been in, but at the same time, it's not squeaky. It doesn't look like too many people have probably had fun in it. So, no, I don't think it's going to save the room, to be honest. The bed for me still seems like it's going to be not the greatest sleep in the world. So, um, I'm going to give this the shivered zone, unfortunately. This room has not passed my test. It's not up to the, the high tier of the overnight stay of vlog. So, Croydon, you've let me down. That travel lodge room has triggered me, to be honest. I've got outside now, I'm still angry, so you know what? I'm gonna go to Nando's, I'm gonna show you some good grub. I'm actually gonna show you the spice levels as well. I always like flexing with the spices, to be honest. I'll show you how much of a unit I am. I can just handle any kind of heat you give me. So this here is the ultimate Nando setup, in my opinion. So down here, I've got the chicken butterfly, the max level spice and the new Lisa that's came out. Now I've got the spicy rice and just normal chips for my two sides. Not really a fan of peri sour chips to be honest. Now the reason I use the medium sauce on the chips and the rice is not to overpower the chicken at the end. It's not because I can't handle extra hot stuff to overpower the chicken. So that's quite an important thing for me. You've got the glasses of water there as well. That's just in emergencies. I don't actually drink the water. It's just there just in case, you know, I mean, a crisis needs to be used, the tissues down there, so well, in case of the crisis now. With a girl, for example, the water wouldn't even be on the table, but because I'm by myself now, I've got it just there. But anyway, though, I'm going to have my chicken, I'm going to have my chips, I'm going to have my rice, and afterwards, I'm going to talk with Newcastle's team and selections for tomorrow's match. Just had a little look around the quiet areas of Croydon now, and I thought we'll do our outro here as we talk down the game for tomorrow. 
As there's some interesting news, first off, Bruno is back. He actually travelled with the squad. There's a leaked picture of him this morning running onto the aircraft as the plane was about to take off. So, no idea how someone managed to lead that. But yeah, that came out today. It's the first time I've seen that picture. So, I do believe that it actually is from today, to be fair. So, whether Bruno plays or not tomorrow is another question. Obviously, the cup games is what you want to keep before. So, I'm hoping we don't play him tomorrow just in case we screw him over. As long as he's 100% fit, then yes, play him. But I've got a feeling he's not 100% yet. So, got to wait a tinky bit longer, in my opinion. But he could be back potentially for that Tuesday game. Now, other than that, really, Chris Wood's gone. He's went to Nottingham Forest on loan with a £15 million clause in his contract from Forest. But another part of his contract is that. Nottingham Forest have to pay if he gets a certain requirement. For example, he may have a certain amount of appearances for Nottingham Forest. And it's said in the contract, to be fair, that the clauses in Newcastle sides were quite reasonable. So like, Nottingham Forest is actually buying for £15 million. So that's really, really good business from Dan Ashworth. But as for Croydon now, obviously the most dangerous area in South London due to the night crime history and just the crime in general. Uh, the robberies and night crimes take up about 50% of all crimes in Croydon, which makes it quite dangerous compared to some of the other places in London. But what I've seen, to be honest, it's actually quite a nice place. Now, obviously I haven't been around the sort of deserted areas in the streets or anything like that. I've been down the main roads when it's quite busy. I'm not sure how it's going to be where it's quieter, but I've got to be real from what I've seen so far, a really nice area. Um, the places are quite good. You see the box park just behind me. I was going to go in there actually, but I don't know, I just, I just don't think I can be asked to be honest. Um, I'm a bit of a tired mood after my trip today, so I'll get myself back in the, the hotel room shortly. Despite with that hotel room, but it is what it is. We we'll go tomorrow against Crystal Palace. But anyway, guys, let me do your thoughts down below, and I thank you all for watching.